I know the title might sound like clickbait, but it's not. Back in October 2018, I started mixing music for other artists. I've kept a record of every mix I've ever done, so I counted up how many mixes were in there. And I've actually done 1,196 mixes so far. So I have a lot I could talk about from doing all those different mixes, but I wanted to keep it simple and just do the one biggest thing I've learned from doing this. And by far the most common issue with a lot of these tracks is that the artist was using a bad kick sample. It sounds so simple, but having a bad kick messes up the low end of a track, and messing up the low end of a track screws up the entire mix. So in this video, I wanna talk about the difference between a bad kick and a good kick and how to choose the right kick for your track because it makes a huge difference in the overall mix. Let's use one of my own tracks that I'm mixing as an example. What you always need to pay attention to is the shape of the kick. To do that, you need an oscilloscope plugin. It sounds fancy, but it's just a window that shows volume over time. You can Google free oscilloscope plugin and you'll find plenty of options, but chances are you already have a plugin with an oscilloscope built into it. Kickstart has a basic one, Shaperbox has one, but it's funny, I still like to use one from an old plugin called Volume Shaper 4. I just hit this arrow to expand it, and I just find this gives me a really detailed view of the kick. So we need to talk about what a bad kick looks like. So this is an example of a kick that's way too long. This whole window here is a quarter note long because I've set it like that in this menu. And you can see the kick is lasting almost a full quarter note which leaves no room for the bass. So the obvious solution would be to shorten the kick using a shape like this. But that doesn't change the fact that this kick still sounds bad. If you look even closer at the waveform, you'll see there's not really an initial transient. So if you're watching this video on phone speakers, you can probably barely hear this kick because there's no initial punch to it. It's just all low end rumble. So here's what this kick would sound like in the full track. sounds really muddy on my studio headphones and it's not cutting through the mix at all. Here's another example of a bad kick. On this one you can tell right away there's not enough initial punch in this area and this kick actually has the opposite problem of the first kick. It's so short that there's no power to it. The main part of the kick stops right here. So when I play it in the full track sounds weak. There's no weight behind it. And in general, you want to avoid kicks that have a really uneven volume to them. So if this kick was played at a nightclub with huge speakers, it would sound like womp, womp, womp. I don't know if that was a good example, but if the kick just gets louder over time, then it's going to ruin the entire mix. It should be at its loudest point in the beginning where you're getting that initial punch. Now let's check out what a good kick should look like. See how it's not too long, so the bass will still have room to breathe, but it'll still have some power to it. And I'll do a shameless plug. This kick is from my house drums pack on BigZSounds.com. But let's compare one of the bad kicks to the good kicks in the context of the whole mix. The good kick just cuts through the mix so much better and the low end is so much cleaner. On big speakers or studio headphones, you hear a massive difference. Now, not every kick will have that exact same shape, obviously. Here's another example. And here's another one. In general, you're looking for a nice initial punch followed by a pretty even signal that trails off over time. And if you have any kind of bass line in your track, which is 99.9% .9 of songs, you don't want your kick lasting any longer than an eighth note. When it goes longer than that, it just fights with the bass and everything is just muddy and shitty. Now it's helpful to understand the relationship between the shape of the kick and the tone. And I can show this by messing around with an EQ. When I filter out the low end of the kick, the shape is really short. It only takes up a tiny amount of time. So that's the initial transient that's happening above like 400 Hertz. 
then if we move that down from like 100 hertz up to like 300 hertz, then we'll get the initial punch of the kick. Then everything below 100 hertz is low end rumble. And it can be really helpful to think of your kick in three separate parts like this, the transient, the punch, and the low end rumble. If you're mixing your track and you feel that your kick isn't punchy enough, then you might choose to boost this area. And you can see how that affected the waveform down here. It gave it a little more initial punch. Or if you feel like there's too much low end rumble, you can reduce the low end too. But you have to be really careful when you're EQing kicks because you can totally mess up the sound. For example, if I reduced these frequencies, you can see you start to get the shape of that low end womp sound, that womp, 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 which is gonna sound really bad on big speakers. So whenever you're trying out new kicks for your mix or trying to EQ a kick, always check it out on the oscilloscope. And instead of trying to fix a bad kick with processing, now you know how to pick a good kick. Thanks for watching. Peace.